Okay, hello. Um, so, we've been looking at one variable data quite a lot, uh, looking at averages and dispersion, um, okay, standard deviation, interquartile range, okay, and lots, lots of ways of representing those as well. Um, but next, uh, we need to look at uh, two variables, okay, how two different variables might interact, um, okay, what their relationship might be. Um, and the first thing we're going to do with two variables is look at correlation. Um, so what exactly is correlation? Okay, you may have seen the word before, you may have some uh, idea about what it is roughly, but uh, there are certain misconceptions that you need to be careful with. Um, I would say that it's uh, a measure of how closely and how consistently two variables change in relation to one another. Okay, so as your one variable uh, increases, uh, does the other one increase by um, sort of a proportional amount each time? Um, does it just most of the time increase? Maybe it decreases. Um, maybe one variable increasing doesn't uh, doesn't mean the other one increases or decreases necessarily. Okay, so. Uh, let's see, what would a strong positive correlation mean? Um, well, I'd say that uh, that would mean as one variable rises um, by a certain amount each time, then you can expect uh, the other variable to rise by a roughly constant um, amount each time as well. Okay, um, okay so there's quite a, a strong sort of relationship, strong trend there. Um, and, well, uh, an example might uh, help under us understand this. Uh, so I'd, I'd say something like GDP and life expectancy. Okay, um, as GDPs, GDP in countries increases, you would absolutely expect life expectancy of those countries to increase as well. Okay, um, so what would a weak positive correlation mean? Uh, well, this would mean when one variable rises, um, most of the time you would expect the other one to rise as well. Uh, it might not be perfect. Something like uh, height and weight. I would say that uh, on average, uh, taller people are usually heavier. Uh, but there are many exceptions. You've got lots of shorter, heavier people. You've got lots of very skinny, tall people that aren't that heavy okay but yeah, uh, there is a rough trend there that taller people uh, are slightly heavier um, so how, how is it measured how what's the scale here um, well uh, we use something called a correlation coefficient and we're going to give it the letter r and it's going to be measured on a scale from minus one to one okay all, all values of r will uh, fall within that range. So um, let's see some examples. Uh, we have uh, a scatter plot here with x and y, and this would have a correlation coefficient of, of 1. And this means that it's a, a completely perfect positive correlation. Okay, as x rises by 1 square, uh, y rises by half a square each time. Um, but it doesn't need to be uh, perfectly spaced out like this, okay, as long as it is in a perfectly straight line on the scatter plot. Okay. Um, then we come to maybe a scatter plot, something like this. Uh, we have definitely an upward trend as x increases, y does uh, usually increase as well. Um, it's not perfect like the previous one, um, but there is a strong trend here. A strong correlation, you'd say. And I'd say this has somewhere around a 0 0.8 uh, value for the correlation coefficient. And as they're both rising at the same time, it's a positive, strong correlation. Okay, uh, this could be anywhere from 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. You would call this strong correlation. Now, what we have here is uh, maybe somewhere around a 0 0.4 uh, value for the coefficient. Uh, but we call this a weak positive correlation. Okay, uh, you can just about see an upward trend, um, but 
uh, you could take two points and see that as uh, x increases uh, between certain points, you have x increasing and y decreasing, like between these two points here. Um, so the, the relationship isn't uh, perfect, isn't very consistent at all, but it is there. That would be a weak positive correlation. Now, uh, you have sort of the exact opposite for negative correlations. Um, if they're in a perfectly straight line, um, but heading downwards, okay, as x is increasing, y is decreasing, then it's a perfect negative correlation. Okay, I might give this something like a, oh, that should be a minus 0 0.8, sorry. Um, but this would be a, a strong negative correlation, um, just like before. Uh, and again, sorry, this should be a negative 0 0.4, um, or maybe even a 0 0.3. Um, okay, you can even have outliers here um, that don't really fit the trend. Okay, that would just add to the weak nature of the correlation. Again, that should be a negative 0 0.3. Um, between strong and weak, uh, some people would have what they call a moderate correlation as well. You could have that for positive and negative. Um, you could have that, you could say that that's around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, although there are no set numbers um, that define weak, moderate, strong correlation. Uh, although one is uh, necessary to be a perfect correlation. Now, uh, what do we have here? Uh, we have no pattern, no relationship. And this would be a, a coefficient around zero. Okay, it might be 0 0.1, might be negative 0 0.2, but we just say there's no correlation there. <coughs> now next, um, we have a phrase that's uh, often talked about, um, correlation does not equal causation. And what does this mean? Um, well, in many of these, many of the examples that you'll see, um, the, we have two variables uh, both rising at the same time uh, because the changes in one variable actually cause the changes in the other variable. Uh, for example, the one above here, uh, a rise in GDP uh, would actually, uh, I don't know, give uh, more tax dollars to the government in that country that they can invest in their healthcare system, their hospitals, and cause a rise in life expectancy as well. Uh, so there is a causation there. One thing is causing the other, uh, and there is a correlation as well. Okay, both are rising quite consistently along with one another. Um, but correlation doesn't always equal causation. Okay, you might just have a strong correlation, but one thing isn't causing the other thing to change. Uh, we don't have an example here. I've got a number of IB schools in the world and number of electric cars sold. Um, so this is real data over the last 10 years, and the IB is a growing program, and uh, that's been growing, and electric cars are becoming more popular, so they have been selling more as well. Uh, this has a strong positive correlation, but um, one thing isn't causing the other thing to happen, um, and so there's no causation here. And there are many examples, uh, some more serious, maybe in the medical field, uh, that can actually have uh, dire consequences if people assume that correlation uh, means that causation uh, is there as well. Okay. Next, we get on to the calculation itself. Um, so there is a formula. Uh, it's fairly compli complicated. Um, and, but you won't need to calculate this in an exam, an IB exam. Uh, you may need to calculate it in an internal assessment, maybe. Uh, so, uh, in an exam, you'll use your GDC, uh, but outside of an exam, uh, you may just use a spreadsheet. In Google Sheets, for example, you can use the formula equals Corel for correlation. Um, then in brackets, uh, highlight the uh, column with your first variable, then do a comma, then highlight the column with your second variable, and then press enter, and it will tell you the R value straight away. On your GDC, uh, if you press stat, edit, um, then type in your data, 
uh, into column one and column two. Then you might need to press mode and check that stat diagnostics are on um, for some reason. Um, otherwise you, it won't tell you R at the end. Then you'll press stat, then go across to calc, then four, lin reg A express B. Uh, make sure it's sort of selected your two columns. Press enter and then uh, R will be one of the results that they give you. Okay.